Hello, hello, and welcome. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I have a collection of buttons, and I'd like to separate them in jars with different colors so they can easily be um, located. Like, if you needed a purple button, we could open this jar. And there should be only purple buttons in here. Some of them are not quite a purple, but in general. So I've got a purple and I have a pink jar. And now I'd like to do another one. And it's funny because this morning I emptied this jar and I thought, ooh, I know what I'm going to do with it. So it's not huge. So I'll probably use it for like green or blue buttons because I don't have a lot of those. But I wanted to do something fun. See, I've got this jar here of buttons and there's a few red. Oh, there's a pink. I haven't gone through them, but I wanted to separate these. So let's make this pretty by decoupaging. So we're gonna need some water and a paintbrush some either Mod Podge or watered down PVA glue. Now PVA glue is simply Elmer School glue or um, you could water down this Anita's um, Tacky Glue. It's also PVA. But first, let's not forget, we need to choose our scripture card for the day. There it is right up front. We'll just take it out. Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. That's a good one. I mean, because isn't every single person, all of us, at some point in time in our life, we get afraid, a little anxiety, a little scared, a little fear. Well... We need to remind ourselves we can put our trust in the Lord. Now, I'm going to set that aside so that I can see it until the next video. Look at me. I'm, I've am i got glue all over my hands and ink. <laughs> Gee, I've been playing already. So let's do this. I chose this napkin. And I did take the other plies off of it. I'm hoping this will be see-through enough to see what colors of buttons are in here. If not, we'll do um, some making of a label. Maybe use stamps or something. So the first thing that I do is I get something to protect my surface. And this is my Elmer School Glue with some water in it. How much? I don't know. I honestly, I just kind of dump some glue in. I start with half and half and mix it around and see if I like the consistency. See, I want it kind of runny. I think I want to do the lid eventually as well. But let's start with this. So the first thing I always do is I paint my surface and not the whole thing at once. Typically, I just do partial, mm, almost half, not quite. And then I take my napkin, and I kind of want to get this butterfly in. Oh, I don't, I love this nap, napkin, so I don't know where I'm going to start, but let's just start on the end. No, we'll start in the middle. And I'm just going to plop it down there. See, kind of on the edge. And then roll that up and roll that up. And then since it's laying on the surface, I'm going to go ahead and glue the rest now as I flop glue everywhere. It's okay. Not a big deal. Decoupaging can be messy, yes. Okay, so we'll flick, fix that over. We'll fix this over. It is going to overlap, so I'm just going to throw some ugh, extra glue on there. 
overlap it, and then pick it up gently, stick my finger inside the top, and gently pat everything down. Set it down. For now, I'm gonna shove this down in there just to get it out of my way. And gently pat the inside, or the, what do you call this? The outside of the top. Oh, you know what? I probably shouldn't have done the top because we want the lid to go on, don't we? So I'm gonna put the lid on it for right this second. I did make a hole in it, that's okay. And then I'm going to come over it carefully, not so I don't rip anymore. And I'm going to put a good layer of glue over top. We do not want this lid to dry on there, though. So I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to see if I can carefully... Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Undo the lid. Maybe... Oh, you guys, I should have thought of this ahead of time. Okay. Once this dries, you can come back and put more on it if you want to. So, this is going to take a while to dry. I think what I should have done was maybe held up the napkin and cut it off right about there. So that then there wouldn't be on anything on the lid. Since I did not do that, what I'm thinking is get a tool of some sort, doesn't matter what kind, and see if I can maybe get some of that napkin off there at the top. Learn from my mistake, right? Okay, I'll finish doing this off camera. We will let this dry and come back and see what it looks like once it's dry and go from there. Actually, I thought that while that dries, why don't we do the lid? And I did take this right out of the center. Once I got it disconnected, I was able to pull it out. And I'm just thinking where I want the lid. Do I want these on there? I'm not sure. But the very first thing I know I need to do is paint this top. And then just the sides. Oh, I did take a baby wipe and wipe the inside off because I did gloop, if that's a word, glop. I don't know. I got glue down in there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe right there. And then I'm just gonna pull this up. Actually, let's turn it and push it down. So I did get a little impatient and I did use my heat gun a little, but the jar got warm, so I quit. I also used it a bit on the lid, but it's metal. So again, it got hot, so we're almost dry. Not 100%, but good enough. I did want to show you something. Um, so, just for fun, I don't know uh, what your favorite scent is, but did you know that you could make your PVA glue that's watered down smell amazing? For instance, I have some eucalyptus drops here. And any essential oil works. And you just put a couple drops in and then stir it around. And every time you use your glue, it will smell good. So just use your favorite scent. I do really like lavender. But right now, I'm at the very end of a cold that I got while camping. And so eucalyptus just kind of helps you oh, breathe better, I guess, is what I was thinking. And then I did find green buttons and put them in here. You cannot tell what color buttons are in there, but that's okay. 
I took what was left of the napkin and I cut out this little butterfly because I want to add it somewhere and show you that you can build up on this. And I'm thinking maybe right here. So all we have to do is get our glue, put a little plop on there, put our butterfly on, and you can actually do as many layers as you want and let it dry. Now, I decided that what I would like to do is, let me move this out of the way a little so I don't knock it over. I kind of want to decorate this. I plugged in my hot glue gun and I'm thinking maybe lace or something like that. See, if I put this lid, oh yes, I put my finger right in the butterfly. If we put this lid on, what we've got is kind of a mess. So I wonder if I just hot glued it to the edge. Maybe that's too wide. Yeah, let's find something else. Here we go. This is a real light green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and it is on and hot. And I'm just thinking maybe put some hot glue there. Just decorate the jar a little more on the lid. What hot glue gun do you guys have? Mine is a high temp mini. I think it was like $3.99 at Hobby Lobby. But see this, but it leaves, um, well, I call them spider webs, really bad everywhere. And so no matter what I'm working on, I always have to go back and pull those flyaways off. And I've seen people working with hot glue guns that do not have that issue. So I'm just wondering, what one do you guys have? And do you like it? Does it leave a ton of spider webs or just a few? Okay, so we cut that off there. And now I'm thinking maybe a little button. So I'll get, where'd my glue gun go? Right over here. Don't lose that. Put a little bit there. And put a green button on there. There. Do I have a, too, much, too much light going on here? I don't know. Okay. So there is our decoupage lid. It is not pretty up in there, but nobody's going to see that part. And when we put it on, that's what it'll look like. Now I feel like it needs something in there. What about some of this? So we'll just start it there. Is it worth separating my buttons when I don't really have many colors? Um, you know, most of mine are the blacks and whites. Just, I don't have a lot of colored buttons. I figured it was worth it because that way when I do want a specific color, I can just grab that jar. Do you guys have buttons? Do you hoard buttons? Do you have only a few buttons? And... Do you tend to use them in your junk journaling? Maybe as decoration or, em, you know, embellishments, that kind of thing. I keep sticking my finger in that butterfly. Okay, so I think that will be cute. And then I'm going to leave the bat the bottom like this because nobody's going to see that. And I think I don't, I could label it green buttons, but I think I'll know because we have a green button here and this here. Yeah, let me know if you're going to, if you're going to do this or how you store your buttons. It'd be uh, interesting, interesting to know how everybody stores their stuff. 
I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Can I ask you a favor? And can you click the thumbs up, like button on this video? That would help me a ton. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel if you like my content. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you later and don't forget our verse of the day, Psalm 56 verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Bye, guys.